Hi there, it's Backwater Jay again. I'm here to talk to you about the COVID cerebroterrorism conspiracy. Uh, this will actually be my second video on COVID-19 and hopefully my last. I'm getting sick of it just like everyone else is, uh, no pun intended. My first video was a lighthearted parody and as a special treat for those of you who stick it out to the end of this rant, I'm including a special acoustic version of my most watched video. So thanks to a deadly pandemic for making me famous, I guess. First of all, fair warning, I'm about to tackle a controversial and divisive subject here. I'm well aware that there are many who will disagree with me, some violently. That's okay. You're entitled to your opinion just as I'm entitled to mine. Uh, but if you're a mass Nazi, you may find what I say to be offensive. We're all looking for someone to blame in these trying times, but none of us want to make it ourselves. The sad thing is, the culprits are squarely these guys. Now wait a second, Jay, back it up. What could you possibly mean by that? Well, to properly answer that, I need to touch on two things. The first is modern science. Yeah, you heard me right. Prior to, oh say for the sake of argument, the 18th century or so, we had an ecological system of checks and balances called natural selection. Now before you get up in arms, don't confuse this for evolution, in which for the record I'm not a believer. They're two completely different concepts that, are that a biased and vocal minority have contrived to make synonymous. They're not. In short, natural selection states that within a given species, those most fit to survive in a certain environment will live on and those not fit to survive in said environment will die out. Grim, I know, but a necessary context. Evolution, on the contrary, supports the idea that life improves, somehow mutates and adapts and grows stronger despite all evidence to the contrary. No offense to those who believe it, but I'm not that much of an optimist. This flies in the face of the second law of thermodynamics. It takes more faith than I have to support. Ramble aside, the scientific and industrial evolutions, for better or for worse, have largely taken natural selection out of the picture. There are almost always ways of extending the lives of those who, by the raw laws of nature, are not fit to survive. Now let me temper this statement by saying I just lost a dearly beloved uncle. Um, his death was not COVID related, but he was suffering from dementia, and frankly it's been a stressful and unnerving situation all around. I love him from the bottom of my heart, but on some level at least it was a relief to know he passed. So I'm not coming at this from an unsympathetic standpoint. It hurts to lose loved ones. I know this as much as anyone. But the fact remains we as sentient human beings have brought an artificial variable into a natural equation. We have created a situation where there are more of us than there is any right to be. I don't blame modern science or medicine for this. I blame our inability to adapt. We have not made any significant efforts to, to limit our procreation while prolonging the lives of those who would otherwise die. The net result is we have created an overcrowded earth. Now folks, the ecosystem has checks and balances. It's how it survived as long as it has. An overcrowded earth makes opportunities for ordinarily minor diseases to reach pandemic levels. It's nature's way of maintaining the balance. It's not, the, it's not in the disease's best interest to kill their hosts. They're in it for survival like anyone else. But the fact that we've created these ideal breeding grounds for pathogens combined with our generally poor care for ourselves creates a powder keg for pandemics to explode. These things happen and have happened as far back as recorded history. Though we feel the losses, humanity lives on, because at some point the scale tips back the other way. That said, the quote-unquote official response, at least here in the U.S., is probably the worst way to handle things. Basically, the line is that we should sink into panic, paranoia, and voluntary self-isolation. That we should stay six feet from other human beings at all times. That we should wear masks at all times. While from a strictly disease control standpoint, these things might make some sense, there are several points that are being intentionally silenced here. First, we need to look at the psychological damage that is being caused by isolation. We as human beings are wired to be in a community with each other, and the online tip of the hat is no substitution. Instead of the quote-unquote COVID death statistics, which frankly are being artificially inflated via economic incentives for healthcare facilities, Brief aside, hospitals are being paid for COVID deaths. Why would they not support that? Even if people are on death's door already, if they test COVID positive, they become part of the statistic, part of the scare tactics. That aside, we are not wired to exist in isolation. If half the studies on quote unquote COVID deaths were done on depression, anxiety, and suicide as a direct result of COVID lockdown, I think we'd be seeing a dramatically different picture. Second, we need to be looking at the long-term effects of living in a bubble. Without exposure to pathogens, we won't build any antibodies to them. Our immune system will not strengthen, it will weaken. And this does not apply merely to COVID. 
My prediction is that when lockdown lifts, we will see outbreaks of everything from the common cold and flu to measles to chickenpox, shingles, any of a slew of STDs. Basically, everything we've been isolating from ourselves from is going to come back to bite us hard all at once. Next, and admittedly, this is a very personal issue, I'd like to look at the modern snake oil of mask wearing. First of all, experts have admitted that this is one element of many that may reduce the risk of COVID transmission. This is the medical equivalent of commercials claiming sugary kids' cereals are part of a balanced breakfast. To be truly safe from COVID, if you're ever going to be, this needs to be combined with proper mask sanitation, combined with eye protection, wearing gloves, and or properly sterilizing your hands several times an hour. Folks, this is the real world. Let's be real. Who actually does that? Diseases are not going to storm the front gate. They're going to swarm and seek out the weakest points to infect. Masks, in my opinion, are useless. Worse, they may exacerbate existing medical conditions, respiratory problems, for instance, or as in my case, anxiety. I'm claustrophobic. I get panic attacks with things strapped onto my face. I'm not proud of it, but since my primary employers have decided to jump on the bandwagon and require masks, I've been on unemployment since the call was made. Frankly, it's more dangerous for me to be driving people around with a mask on than without. When the media, uh, what the media has been woefully neglecting to mention is our first line of defense, basic common sense practices of good health. When the rubber meets the road, eating well, sleeping well, and a good exercise regimen are far more effective at preventing disease than any artificial measures the governments may choose to impose on us. This is a wake-up call, folks. Stop living the decadent Western quote-unquote American dream and start living an actual healthy life. The cold hard truth is most of the alleged COVID deaths are people who have compromised immune systems from the get-go. In other words, if COVID doesn't get them, something else will. Now I'm not without sympathy. Many around me and dear to me are in the same boat. And if you've lost someone to the virus, you have my deepest and heartfelt sympathies. Many of my friends and families are those highest at risk, the elderly, cancer patients, recovering addicts, those who regardless of fault have abused and vulnerable bodies. But it all comes back to natural selection. We have chosen not to change our ways. We have chosen to infest this planet, to put on my best agent Smith, like a virus. Is it really our right to complain when the balance swings the other way? In short, the worst thing we can do is focus on COVID or panic on account of it. Our best response would be to take this state of crisis as a wake-up call. Don't suspend your daily life in fear. Rather, improve your daily life. Become a better, healthier person. And maybe don't breed so much. Massive death's not the only way to reduce population. Self-control does the same thing with a fraction of the body count. Anyway, thanks for sitting through this. Now to the part you've been looking forward to. This is the acoustic version of Funky COVID Fever. in China. The girls are all around, but none of them want to step near me. The uncommon cold, we all like to know how this kid has CDC. The government's solution is to tank the economy, while I drink just to pass the time away in this month-long quarantine. So I got on my discord, they talking crazy years and weavers. I mean really why, and in reply to say clunky COVID fever. like a zombie apocalypse turns normal rational human beings into hypochondriacs cause why use little common sense when you can just overreact so they bathe the dogs in bleach when they begin to cough while they eat junk food and walk in the rain and think something's really off now these days President Trump gets more love than Justin Bieber hey money talks but what's the cause for this clunky COVID fever you know what I'm saying I mean, you realize you're just as likely to die from influenza, from a dog attack, a freak lawnmower accident, 
to an afari with a fever pal. I met this girl online, she said, hi, my name is Shiva. Seemed the type not to buy the hype, immune to COVID fever. She said, I'd like a drink. I said, um, I'll just door dash it. But we ended up with a bowl of pho because my app was crashing. So I asked her to my crib, cause going out was such a task. When she arrived, it was a big surprise. Shiva wore a mask. She won't let me within six feet. I think I should probably leave her. You must be sure that the girl is pure from the clunky COVID fever. You know what I'm saying? Don't want no long distance relationships. This is the 20s and I'm coming up empty, you know? Faux sure. show. Back in the streets, looking for a little human contact. I took a shot walking in the park, but the man don't want that. So I went to the store, even buying groceries as a caper. We all need supplies, but in God's name, why you hoarding toilet paper? So I gave up and went back to my home, the only place that wasn't illin'. Just can't stop thinking how Big Farm is poised to make a killing. I used to think we should play it safe, but now I'm a believer. The only thing you'll cure is your own immune with the clunky COVID fever. You know what I'm saying? COVID fever's a monster, y'all. Clunky COVID fever. Thanks for watching.